Yeah, hey, Connor, just how would you assess where the progress has been at with, with your group so far this year? Uh, not where I'd hoped it'd be, quite honestly. And there's, you know, especially coming off uh, the performance this past week, um, we've got to do a much better job of staying on finishing and sustaining blocks. And there is progress. You look at our grades from this past week um, as far as what I consider mental bus or complete assignment errors. Um, I believe we accounted for uh, two collectively throughout the game. So that is an improvement. Um, the one penalty we did have in the game, um, you know, it's, it's kind of on a quote unquote RPO type throw and that's a little bit of the cost of doing business. So you're searching for some positives right now and those are two of them. The things we've got to continue to work on is our finish, sustaining blocks, and then ultimately our physicality, getting displacement. And, um, you know, it's turning that two-yard run into a four-yard run. It's often said, you know, in the game of football, the most important yard is the difference between second and seven and second and six. It changes the complete aspect, the complete – um, dynamic of that next play call and how you continue to move forward. I know it, it's something everyone's had to deal with a little bit this year, but COVID issues, some injury issues, especially at the beginning of the season for you guys, just how much more difficult did it make that to find cohesion, you know, with a pretty new unit this year? Yeah, it's been a challenge. And I think it's been a challenge for everyone across the country. So our situation is not unique. It's not an excuse is that exacerbated a little bit when you have to replace five starters? Certainly it is. But um, those are things that we need to continue to press forward through. And I think we all knew there was going to be some growing pains, but now you're getting into week six, week seven, and credit West Virginia, certainly that's the game that's most fresh in my mind. Um, credit their defense. They have a, a very good defense, very disciplined defense, and they play really hard. But we've got to continue to push forward. The guys in our room know that. They know that we need to continue to improve on a daily basis. And they also understand that, you know, three times a week, somebody can get pulled out of that room, like has been done. So ultimately, more so than in a typical year, you know, Next man has to be ready. Appreciate it, Connor. Thanks. You're welcome. Fitz? Yeah, Connor, um, you moved Christian Duffy from right to left tackle. How did he uh, do against West Virginia? You know, he did well in some instances. There's still – and I don't know that people quite understand the challenges of going from the right side to the left side. It's, um, it's a little bit more challenging than you think. And because of some of those issues that John talked about, some guys have not been able to settle into a position. And, you know, there's part of me that says, gosh, I wish, you know, you could just say, hey, Christian, you're going to just stick right here. But because of circumstances that we're in, um, most out of our control, those guys have to have the ability to play on both sides. When you have some younger guys like we do, we also need to understand of playing the 70 to 75 reps per game through a Big 12 schedule. That's going to be pretty challenging, you know, and, and you look at the lack of conditioning that may have taken place or would have taken place through winter conditioning, spring football, all the way into the summer. So, you know, I'm pleased with Christian. I know he's his, his own hardest critic, if you will. Um, but uh, um, I think he's progressing along nicely. And it's, it's, you know, he gets, he's playing with confidence and then, you know, he's not available. And then, um, you know, he's playing with confidence back there at the right side. And then, Gosh, you have to move him over to left. So um, I've been pleased with Chris, and I'm going to continue to ask him to play those multiple positions because that's ultimately what we need right now.
You mentioned to me earlier this season that Arkansas State, what happened in that game, got your guys' attention. Mm -hmm. uh, West Virginia might be the best front you see this season. Did the Mountaineers and what happened on Saturday get your guys' attention again? Yeah, I think so. And, and you know, I, it's, it's, again, we did not play necessarily with the, the, the focus that we needed to play with. So every week has got to be a learning experience, and it's a learning experience whether you're winning or whether you're losing. And, you know, we talk about continuing to move on. Um, the bearing of what happened last week, whether it's a win or loss, does not impact what is ultimately going to happen this upcoming week. But there's still a lot of lessons to be learned. And those lessons, you know, as you look at the course of that game of, of getting in and out of it, there were some good things. Now, you have to search for them a little bit. But there were some positive things, and it's building on those positives and continuing to work on the things that we need to work on. So is it a, a wake-up call? I, it's, it's been the same message, um, Tim, since the beginning, is, is it is about being better today than we were yesterday and better tomorrow than we were today. And I know that sounds very much as, as coaches speak. However, especially with where we are at as a group, the unique circumstances of 2020, I don't know that it could ever be more true than it is in these, in this situation. Thanks coach. You got it. Derek. Hey coach, uh, Carver Willis got into a couple games so far this season. Sometimes it seemed like it was maybe out of necessity. Is that the case or was he progressing enough that he was probably going to see the field anyway? I would say a combination of both and you know, Coach Kleiman um, came down so many weeks ago and he said, you know, Connor, you, you watch Carver, and I think pretty highly of our defense events collectively of that group. And um, he said, you know, you're watching him down on that scout team, and he is holding up time and time again. And his maturity and how he wants to compete gives him that opportunity in my mind. So – is there a little bit of that necessity? Certainly. However, I'm not going to take away from how well he has progressed and um, how excited I am about he and his future with us in this group. So he's deserved the reps that he's gotten when you look at it. And um, um, he's just continuing to get better, you know, and it's just – ensuring those guys are available for practice and preparation so they can continue to um, develop up front. But I'm really excited about Carver because of his athleticism and how he competes and how hard he plays. And that's that's got to be a huge, huge point of emphasis as we continue to move forward is we have got to have the ability to play harder than our opponent. And I say it's a got to or it's a must because that is 100% within our control. You know, I'm not going to control how good West Virginia's defensive line is or how good Oklahoma State's um, defense, which is uh, an extremely good defense as well, is. But we can control how hard we play. Have you seen that light bulb come on at all with any of the other players that you've recruited in the last 12 to 18 months? Yeah, you're starting to see a little bit of it, and especially because we are taking some time, as coaches mentioned, in practice to have a young guy's developmental period. You know, you're starting to see, um, I think Taylor Poitier is really starting to turn a corner. And he and I talk quite often as far as the ability he has is, is I think, is pretty exceptional the consistency that he has needs to continue to improve. When you look at guys like, you know, Sam Shields, who over the course of the last two and a half months, he and I had a conversation along with some of the other offensive line about where his weight was. And, you know, he's lost 23, 24 pounds um, since August 18th. And um, he's developing, he's, he's, doing the things that, that we recruited just because he's in a little bit better shape. Um, you know, Taylor Warner and Whit Mitchum, you see those signs of things that are uh, 
of what you recruited and their understanding, not only techniques, but their understanding concepts a little bit better. So getting them involved, um, whether it's 12 plays on a Tuesday and 15 plays on a Wednesday, I know that that is going to further their development so much more going into this spring. So I'm excited about them all. Thanks, Coach. Got two more here, starting with Arnie. Uh, yeah, you talked about guys being ready to play 75 plays and so on. But, and I know the defense is, is they talked about rotating fresh guys in, but how difficult is that with an offensive line where you're also with five new guys trying to build a cohesive unit? Is it kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation? Well, it's, and I think that's a great question, and it's something that we continue to evaluate as coaches nonstop because you say exactly you want guys who are fresh and who are playing hard but you also want that cohesiveness when am I gonna have the ability to exit off this zone stack or pass off this particular twist or game and pass protection and there is a a feel that goes along with that but I've said from the beginning that I want to be a group that has the ability to play seven to eight guys who are not only deserving, but who can add value. And one of the biggest benefits that that does is it doesn't leave you with a situation, I think, that we found ourselves in going into this year with so few guys with very little playing experience. And what you're doing is preparing for the, the unknowns and you know, I know it's kind of the common term. It's 2020. There's a ton of unknowns, a ton of uncontrollables, but even injuries down the down the road, you know, how can you continue to be prepared for that? And then ultimately, how can you continue to move this program forward and build it not only for what's in front of us right now, but what our plans are and what we're putting together for down the road as well. And the way that I know that you're going to keep guys involved and you're going to continue to keep guys growing is by ensuring that they are involved and they are involved in the game plan. So there is a balance in it. Is there an exact science to it? No, but um, you know, you got to make judgment calls on that. Last one here, Ryan. Hey, uh, Connor, I know, you know, Cooper has been able to play some this year, but he also had been somewhat, nagged by injuries. I said, how much has that, have those injuries somewhat affected his development on top of all the stuff that's pandemic? Yeah, that's a great question. And Coop is a, a very tough young man. And what I mean, tough, um, uh, tough mentally, you know, which in my estimation is the only toughness that really counts. And he is overcoming some things. I, I, I kind of, uh, he and I have a great relationship. I give him a little bit of crap every now and again of saying, you know, you, you got to be 95% or better to get in that game. And he always jokes with me. And, and that's not quite the case because I know he is still battling a little bit of, of that high ankle sprain that he sustained so long ago. And in fact, I know there's multiple times that um, Mindy and our athletic training staff, you know, they, they, with high ankle sprains, you try one tape job, he'll go out there play a little bit, get back over, try a different taping job. So, you know, there's some things that I know are frustrating to him. Um, we ran in that second series, for instance, something that comes to mind, uh, a counter that we got, I think, six yards on, and and he was the second puller, and, and he fell off the block. And I said, Coop, what the hell happened? That's not you. And he just said, you know, my, my ankle kind of gave out a little bit. Um, so – there's some frustration that he's having right now, continuing to work through that. But the thing that's most important is he's continuing to work through it. He's not complaining. He's not making excuses. And uh, um, I'm very excited about uh, being with Cooper for the next, you know, shoot, you look at the next three or four years. Well, and Connor, I got, I got one more thing for you because, you know, when, when some things happen on campus this summer where kind of an inflammatory tweet by a K-State student, you know, offended a lot of players on on your team uh you were pretty vocal about it as well and then today with just this, this being a day off for for the team 
uh, to go vote. How much have you talked to your players just about the social issues and, and taking advantage of being able to exercise your right to vote, considering that's, that's not uh, an, a luxury that some people in other countries have? Yeah, it's, it's something that we do talk about quite often. And I've told our guys all the time, this is not going to be just about football. And in order to build great relationships, oftentimes, um, you need to talk about some of those other social issues. So we did have a conversation as a position group. Um, unfortunately, during this time, it was via Zoom, which is not an ideal situation. And I think it opened up a lot of eyes to uh, some of the young people within our group. Um, who may not know other players are going through some of these issues. Um, and uh, it certainly opened up my eyes and it certainly um, brought a lot of awareness to, to social issues that, that a lot of young people within our football program and a lot of people throughout the uh, entire country um, are exposed to that, that I am not. So it's been a great educational process and, you know, Yesterday in meetings, I told the guys, I said, regardless of whom you vote for um, or where you stand on what side of the aisle, I think it's most important that everyone gets out there and does their civic duty to, uh, to go out there and vote because you're absolutely right. This is a, a privilege that, that, uh, um, that our democracy provides us, and uh, I don't take it lightly. And, and quite honestly, I don't think that our football players should either, especially in light of um, some of the current issues going on in this country.